Dirgal stands to his side of Kelimvor, recording those who pass on from their mortal lives. A former greater deity, Dirgal passes his days waiting on things to pass finally into nothingness. I am Ben Dignan, and welcome once again to Religion in the Realms. Titles. Jurgle has many titles. They include Lord of the End of Everything, Scribe of the Doomed, Seneschal of the Crystal Spire, The Forgotten One, The Pitiless One, Protector of the Names of the Dead, Guardian of Tombs, The Final Scribe, and The Bleak Seneschal. Jurgle was also known by the alias of Nakasir by the survivor states of the Netherese Empire so long ago. Portfolio and Domains Jurgle's portfolio includes Fatalism, Proper Burial, and Guardian of Tombs. Jurgle's listed domains for 5th edition are Death and Knowledge and Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. Though Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide was published before the Grave Domain was made official in Xanthire's Guide to Everything, I personally would also attach the Great Domain to Jurgle as well. Parents and Manifestations What species Jurgle is, is currently unknown, but he can be likened to the mummified version of an altogether alien humanoid species reminiscent of a praying mantis. He has a smooth, elongated gray face with a pair of bulging yellow eyes. Insectoid-like mandibles and barely visible nose and ears. Jurgle's voice is a disembodied, chilling voice that sounds like a dry whisper. His body is wrapped in a gray cloak that seems to be filled with shadow. The outer portion of this cloak is a gateway to the negative energy plane, and any individual who touches it has to save against being sucked into the negative energy plane and immediately dying. Over top of his clawed hands, if you can call them hands, Jurgle wears white gloves. At all times, Jurgle carries a thick scroll and an ink quill. The writing on the scroll is incomprehensible, and I speculate that Jurgle documents the names of the dead in a long-forgotten language that may only be known to him. Jurgle can commit a person's name to the scroll that he carries, and advance time forward for that individual alone to the moment of their death. Jurgle does not wield a weapon but instead the simple touch of one of his hands affects someone as if they were hit with the enervation spell from 2nd edition. What's worse it is that if both hands touch an individual, they suffer the effects of the 2nd edition spell, Energy Drain. Both of these spells involve the loss of character levels. Jurgle has the ability to look at a being and see their whole life stretch out before them, regardless of magical protections and wards. This sensation is described as an alien sensation of something cold and slithering probing one's mind as they are left utterly paralyzed by the process. Jurgle can also turn into any undead creature and gain the features and abilities of said creatures. Lastly, he can adopt the form of a wizened, bent-over, elder human being with a long white beard. Jurgle's chief manifestation is the echoing sound of a large tome being closed. This manifestation is said to occur upon the death of long-lived individuals, especially those who have extended their life through magical means. White-bearded vultures are associated with Jurgle, and they are said to ferry the spirits to Jurgle out in the outer plains. Finally, Jurgle can enact his will through incorporeal undead creatures like wraiths and shadows. However, since working alongside Kalimvor, Jurgle rarely summons such creatures unless there is a definite need to. Personal History Jurgle once held the portfolio of death, the dead, and strife before he gave them up willingly to Bane, Ball, and Mercule, when these three, collectively known as the Dead Three, were powerful mortals. Jurgle was formerly a lawful evil greater deity who favored the discord and death mortals enacted on one another in their various pursuits. Jurgle was a mighty deity who went unchallenged, but at some point Jurgle lost the thrill and desire to hold his position. As one of, if not the strongest deities on Toril for so long, 
There was nothing for him to pursue any longer, and he fell into a state of boredom and gloominess. Jurgle's transference of his portfolios to the Dead Three is recounted in the tale of Knucklebones, Skull Bowling, and the Empty Throne. The Dead Three wished to have the power that Jurgle had and caused destruction across Faerun as their power grew. The Dead Three even brought down a demigod known as Borum, one of the seven lost gods, and split that demigod's divine energy between the three of them. Eventually, the Dead Three became powerful enough to reach Jurgle's realm in Hades. Every servant of Jurgle fell to them, between the simplest of zombies to powerful liches. The Dead Three were shocked when they confronted Jurgle, and he offered up his position so willingly and to serve whoever took up his mantle as their seneschal. The Dead Three then turned against one another and fought. Jurgle looked on indifferently for some time before intervening in the combat but four of the dead three ended up killing one another. Jurgle decided that his portfolios would be split up three ways between them, and to determine who would get first pick between his three chief portfolios, a game of skill would be played. The dead three each took a skull of one of Jurgle's liches and bolted it across Hades to see who could throw it furthest. Malar, deity of the hunt, coincidentally came to see Jurgle at this opportune time and chased down the three skulls so as to halt the competition and have his own stake in this division of portfolios. The dead three once more began fighting with one another at this new development, but Jurgle stepped in and proposed a new game while Malar was still off in his pursuit. Breaking off his skeletal finger bones, he handed them to the dead three and told them to play a game of knucklebones to determine who would get first choice. Bane, the winner, took the portfolio of Strife. Mercule came in second place, who Jurgle eventually went on to serve first as Seneschal, chose the portfolio of the dead. Finally, Ball took the remaining death portfolio. Another, though less popular tale, tells of Jurgle giving up his portfolio to the dead three out of guilt. Upon realizing that he would not have control over all souls upon their death, and that the faithful of the various deities would be claimed, Jurgle was driven into a fit of rage. While in this state, Jurgle created Kessiv, the Chaos Hound, to wreak havoc upon mortals and the other deities alike. His stepping down from his past station was seen as an act of penance. Jurgle's name came to be pushed out of the knowledge of lay people as Mercule took up his position as Lord of the Dead. Even when Mercule was killed during the Time of Troubles, Jurgle remained in his position as Seneschal and served the incoming Siric. Though Jurgle acted in his own way to undermine Siric when it became clear that Siric was not a good Lord of the Dead, especially after the mishap with the Serenishad. Jurgle finds Kelvinvor to be a better Lord of the Dead and loyally serves him. Kelvinvor holds a respect for Jurgle and listens to what he has to teach him about being Lord of the Dead. However, there still is a level of mistrust given Jurgle's mysterious nature. Whether Jurgle will eventually pass on to non-existence with a suitable Lord of the Dead now in his stead remains unseen. But for now, Jurgle seems content fulfilling his duties. Personality Jurgle is a lawful neutral demigod. Jurgle is fatalistic, but is nothing but formal, orderly, and organized in the records he keeps. Jurgle seems incapable of anger, and quite frankly seems devoid of all emotion. Jurgle holds that life is but a moment before the eternity that is a being's death. Personal Realms In 1st edition and 2nd edition sources, Jurgle resides on the neutral evil outer plane of Hades, Known as the also known as the Grey Waste, or collectively the Grey Waste of Hades. He lives in the realm of the Crystal Spire on the first of three layers of Hades known as Oinos. Hades is known by some to be the most evil of the planes, but you would not know it simply by hearing its physical descriptions. Hades is a plane that drains the color out of all things to some shade of grey a meaning out of life for all mortals who come there. Eventually, apathy sets in, and others begin to have no regard for the actions they commit towards others. Those who stay here for too long lose their sense of self and become unwilling to leave. 
With enough time, mortals turn into larvae alongside those evil souls who formed here after dying on the prime material. The river Styx passes through the uppermost layer of Oinos, and it is here that the river Styx is at its midpoint as it winds its way through the lower plains. Oinos is a constant battleground for the blood war between demons and devils, and Oinos has been scarred due to the eons of this conflict. It is a layer filled with stunted trees and plants. It is mostly flat, save for the occasional jagged hill along the landscape. Here, a disease known as the Wasting Sickness, or the Graze, is ever-present. It drains an individual very slowly. It will only kill a person after they have become so debilitated to the point of being un- incapable of fighting back. The Sky of Hades holds no celestial bodies, and is nothing but a grey expanse that only darkens and lightens. It only mirrors the grey terrain below. Now, as I will very soon describe, Kevinvor and Zurgle are placed on the Fugue Plane, a neutral plane in the cosmology of the World Tree in World Axis model. However, with the revision back to using the Great Wheel as the assumed cosmological model for 5th edition, I am very sure, but not 100% sure, that the Fugue Plane is still its own distinct entity and no longer tied to the Grey Wastes of Hades. If anyone could point me in the direction of a source, novel, etc. that could spell this out for me, I would be greatly appreciative. With the shift to the World Tree Cosmological Model in 3rd edition, Kalimvor's realm, and thus Jurgle's as well, were now found on the few plane. Jurgle resided with Kalimvor in Kalimvor's realm of the Crystal Spire which overlooks the City of Judgment. The City of Judgment is a walled city populated by those souls who have been judged by Kalimvor after death. The wall that surrounds the City of Judgment is made from the souls of the faithless in a green mold that binds them all together. The faithless are those who refuse to worship any deity during their lives or pay lip service to the gods as they went through life. It is this terrible fate to be placed in the wall as your soul and consciousness waste away. The false are the souls of those who betrayed a given faith they had tied to themselves in mortal life. Depending on their judgment, they may only serve menial roles in the City of Judgment. Kalimvor's and Jurgle's followers act as the overseers of the City of Judgment. There's some conflicting lore that says the true devotees of other faiths wait in the city to be picked up by their deity servants, while another source says that they wander outside the fugue plane altogether, waiting to be taken away. Devils are allowed to roam the City of Judgment, since a deal was made with Kalimvor to allow them to come into the city and procure souls as they will. Demons, on the other hand, will conduct raids upon the City of Judgment and wrench free souls there to bring back into the Abyss. The followers of Drugal and Kalimvor will defend against such raids or make their way into the Abyss and enact divine retribution. The City of Judgment is a tightly packed metropolis, grey and bland in appearance. The Crystal Spire stands at the center of the city and the spire is made of glittering, transparent rock. The fugue plane itself is even blander and flatter than that of even Oinos. It exists in its own neutral place in the cosmological order. No travel by a mortal humanoid is possible in reaching the fugue plane. The fugue plane, the city of judgment, and crystal spire, for all intents and purposes, are the same in the 4E world axis model. Allies and Allegiances Jurgle's chief ally and superior is Kelimbor. During the days of the Netherese Empire, Jurgle was allied with the Monitor, appreciating on Monitor's de- dedication to law and order. With the re-emergence of Monitor in the realms after the Second Sundering, it is currently unclear if the two have become allies once more. In the past, when he was a lawful, evil, greater deity, he courted Shar being ever mindful of the attempts she might make to manipulate him. He also begrudgingly worked alongside Taiki before the fated day that Taiki was split into Peshaba and Taimora. Enemies Jurgle's enemies include Sirik and Velsharun. Jurgle holds an enmity towards Sirik, since during Sirik's tenure as Lord of the Dead, 
Sirik did not uphold his responsibilities to the title. Velsharun is now a dead power in the realms, still not restored even though the second sundering has occurred, but Velsharun was a demi-power of necromancy. Avatar and Deity Stapelox A second edition supplement, Powers and Pantheons, contains the breakdown for Jurgle's avatar. Symbols Over the editions of D&D, Jurgle has two different symbols. In earlier editions, his symbol was that of a jawless skull resting beside a quill atop a scroll. Later in 5th edition, his symbol is described as that of a skull biting down upon a scroll. Canonically, I do not know if there was a decided change in the faith symbol, or perhaps we can just accept that it evolved over the years to the one that we now have. But adventurers and scholars may still come across the older one from time to time. Central Dogma from Faiths and Pantheon's 3rd edition supplement. Quote, Each being has an internal resting place that is chosen for him or her at the moment of creation. Life is the process of seeking that place and eternal rest. Existence is but a brief aberration in an eternity of death. Power, success, and joy are as transitory as weakness, failure, and misery. Only death is absolute then only at its appointed hour. Seek to bring order to the chaos of life, for in death there is finality and a fixedness of state. Be ready for death, for it is at hand and uncompromising. Life should only be prolonged when it serves the greater cause of the death of the world. End quote. Presence of the Faith Jurgel was once a name of great power and prominence on the world of Toril. During this period, Jurgle was seen as a being of fear, though respected, a compassionless entity who came to ferry an individual way upon their death. He was avidly venerated in lawful militaristic states. However, on present-day Toril, only sages, historians, and a small body of clergy are aware of his existence. Those outside of his clergy who know of Jurgle think of him to be a sinister, shadowy entity. Among the small body of Jurgle worshippers are monks, necromancers, and paladins. Their alignment usually varies between lawful evil, lawful neutral, and lawful good. You can still find pockets of his worship in Faerun, where his name is mentioned at funerals, or in communities where the deceased are buried with a scroll placed between their teeth with their names written upon it. A significant body of his clergy is found and supported in Thay. Here, clergy are employed by the Zolkirs, or Red Wizards, to document their slave records. Hierarchy and Structure of the Clergy Jurgle's clergy are a rigid and monastic order of scribes. Though there are those who still cling on to undeath in the form of lawful evil or lawful neutral mummies, they are known as the chosen, as the chosen clergy who are tasked with putting off death to bring order and regulation to the disposition of the dead. Some of these mummies have servants who are skeletons or zombies, but never sentient undead other than themselves. It is said that when Toril finally ends, the last of Jurgle's chosen undead will crumble away into dust after documenting the last known moments of the world. The priests of Jurgle are known collectively as Scriveners of the Doom. Each temple has a high-ranking clergy member who goes by the title of High Scrivener of Doom. Past that, no other defining ranks or titles are given to Jurgle's clergy. Responsibilities and Duties of Clergy and Worshippers During the time of the Netheril Empire, the clergy of Jurgle worked as morticians, scribes, and funerary workers along with their other duties. Jurgle's small clergy currently fulfills the same roles, but far from the numbers and presence they once held. Archives of these scrolls are maintained as best as possible. In days of old, the clergy recorded births, deaths, and the taxes for rulers they served. When scrolls or tomes are filled out with the names of the deceased, clergy will transport them to other houses of worship that will then properly archive them, or they will archive them in their own repositories. Orders and Priestly Bodies The Companions of the Pallid Mask were once a larger clerical body who were specialists in both combating the undead and controlling the undead. They targeted undead who were not sanctioned by the church or were troublesome in general. 
Now only a handful of the companions exist. The Hand of Jurgle were another ex- now extinct body of elite clergy members who avenged slights upon the Church of Jurgle. Their primary targets were those who resurrected an individual without paying tribute to Jurgle, or those who looted tombs protected by the Church of Jurgle. Doom scribes are especially priests of Jurgle who have a deep understanding of the undead and the destination of souls in the outer planes. Appearance and dress. The clergy of Jurgle shave their heads to be smooth. They wear simple, unadorned gray robes and long white gloves. It is rare to not see one of them without a satchel filled with scrolls, inks, and quills. In a skull each of them carries is contained a mixture of bone powder and ash needed in the sealing ritual. The same skull serves as their holy symbol. In older days, clergy members would wear a pale mask with bulbous eyes that depicted Jurgle's face. The clergy of Jurgle only adventure on rare occasions, and this reportedly only happens when Jurgle directly communicates to them, telling them to leave their dusty temple on his behalf. Any armor can be worn by the clergy of Jurgle, and they are trained with bludgeoning weapons. This distinct weapons training also is done so they can later powder the bones of their foes to later be used in the sealing ritual. Rituals Clerics of Jurgle pray for their spells at dusk, as dusk is thought to be a representative of the end of life. The sealing is a ritual clergy of Jurgle carry out after documenting the death of a person. Clergy seal the record by sprinkling a light dusting of ash and powdered bone over the inked words. In the days of the Netherese Empire, when Jurgle was at the height of his power, the sealing was rather different, though still associated with death. After the dead were interred, a large wax seal of Jurgle's symbol was placed on the lid or side of the dead's container. While the wax of the seal was still warm, the same bone powder and ash mixture was sprinkled into the wax and a prayer was then said to Jurgle. On the last night of the year in Faerun, the 30th of Night Hall, the Church of Jurgle holds the night of another year. All clergy members stop their record keeping for this one night. For that night, the clergy instead read out the names of all those who died that year. They end this day by crying out, One year closer! General locations of temples and shrines. Now comes for some addition inconsistencies. In 5th edition, it is said that no places of worship dedicated to Jurgle exist anymore, save those ruins and abandoned temples once dedicated to him when he was a greater and evil power. Though, Jurgle's priests are allowed in the houses of worship dedicated to Denir, Kalimvor, and Mercule. However, in 3rd edition and 2nd edition sources, though they are rare, Places of worship to Jurgle are described to be stationed in lifeless crypts and mausoleums. Animals or plants that find themselves in these places of worship never seem to live as long as they should. The mortals who serve and work in these temples seem to grow weak as they toil. However, they do not die until their appointed time comes. Visitors to temples to Jurgle are rare, though those who have been to these temples describe rows of Jurgle's clergy record-keeping the affairs of mortals. Undead mummies in service to Jurgle may or may not attack any interlopers who find their way into these temples. That all depends if the interloper has been preordained to die at that time. If interlopers attempt to disrupt their duties, they will attempt to drive off the interloper or kill them outright, all depending on the mummy themselves. Specific Locations of Temples and Shrines the Crypt of Imminent Death is found in Byzantur Fay. This temple is a small onion-shaped building made of gold-veined marble. God's Walk Keep in the Barony of Green Oak within the Border Kingdoms is a sacred site for both churches of Kelmvor and Jurgol. Here an event called the Meeting of the Three, aka the Howling, used to occur at certain times of the year when three deities, Garagos, Shar, and Jurgle wandered this ancient castle. The largest and oldest temple to Jurgle, the Vault of the Doom, was found in Seventon, an ancient Netherese town. The temple here was made of grey granite in exacting detail. The temple contained a large mortuary, temple proper, a large necropolis, and small attached communal houses where communities of paid mourners lived. 
Undead protectors guarded the temple and were under the command of the clergy of Jurgal. Character Options For 2nd edition, in the Powers and Pantheons and Netheral Empire of Magic supplements, you can find the breakdown for the Doom Scribe Specialty Priest. However, it must be said that the supplement states that they are essentially a non-player class. For 3rd edition, in the Lost Empires of Faerun supplement, you can find the Jurgal's Pact feat. Continuing the practice of building backgrounds, here are my suggested characteristics for a Worshipper of Jurgal background. For your two skill proficiencies, I would take History and Religion. For languages known or tool proficiencies, I would take Proficiency in Calligrapher Supplies and a language of your choice. For your equipment, there's quite a few different ones that I could see you taking. You could take the Acolyte's Equipment, the Hermit's Equipment, but swap out the Herbalism Kit for a Holy Symbol, the Sage's Equipment, but exchange some of the 10 gold pieces for a Holy Symbol, and the Cloistered Scholar's Equipment that can be found in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, but again, swap out some of that gold for a Holy Symbol. For your final Ribbon ability, I would take the Acolyte's Shelter of the Faithful, or the Hermit's Discovery, the Sage's Researcher, or the Cloister Scholar's Library Access. Now here is a list of subclasses that I think would be thematically appropriate for an NPC or PC to take if they were to play a Worshipper of Jurgal. For the Barbarian, there's the Path of the Ancestral Guardian that can be found in Xanthar's Guide to Everything. For the Cleric, you have the Death Domain from the Dungeon Master's Guide, the Knowledge Domain from the Player's Handbook, in the Grave Domain from Xanthar's Guide to Everything. For the Monk, there's the Way of the Shadow in the Player's Handbook, as well as the Way of the Long Death found in Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. For the Paladin, you have the Oath of Vengeance found in the Player's Handbook. For the Sorcerer, the Divine Soul Sorcerer found in Xanthar's Guide to Everything. And finally, a Wizard who's trained in the School of Necromancy in the Player's Handbook. Dungeon Master Options Starting with monsters, here's a list of monsters from official 5e sources that would, or I think would worship and or serve Jurgal. From the monster manual, you have the ghost, the mummy, the mummy lord, shadows, specters, poltergeist, will-o'-wisps, wraiths, giant vulture, and vultures. From Mordenkind's Tome of Foes, there's the Alp, the Nightwalker, the Sword Wraith Commander, and the Sword Wraith Warrior. From Curse of Strahd, there's the Phantom Warrior. From Dungeon of the Mad Mage, there's the Shadow Assassin. Now, some 2nd edition sources mentioned monsters that are not yet available in 5th edition sources. They are Trillix, Wastrels, and Zegyes. Trillix are nearly invisible creatures from the negative energy plane that do not attack, nor are harmed from physical attacks. Rather, they feed on the life force of the dying. It may luck into finding a dying creature, however it can influence surrounding creatures to become violent and thus eventually have dying near them. The Trilla can be found in the 2nd edition supplement, Montrous Compendium, Planescape Appendix 3. Wastrels are dangerous birds found in desolate and fetid places in the multiverse. They look like the common crow, but their plumage is shabby and mottled with grey, brown, and black streaks. A wastrel who draws even a minor amount of blood can remain close to their prey. This bird then leeches away the life force of their victim that is reflected mechanically by the loss of their ability scores. Wastrels can be found in the 2nd edition supplement Monstrous Compendium, Planescape, and Appendix 2. Zagi are the negative energy half of a pair of creatures made from the positive and negative energy planes. These tentacled beings of energy have an alien intelligence and mysterious origin. The Zegi attacks with its tendrils of negative energy that corrode whatever they touch. Next are just a list of NPC stat blocks that could be used from 5th edition sources. From the monster manual, you have the Acolyte and Priest stat blocks, though I would change out their, spe- their given spells for more ones that are more thematically appropriate to the worship of Jurgle. Finally, in Baldur's Gate to set into Avernus, you have the Master of Soul stat block. To round out this section for the podcast, I'd just like to talk about magic items. A favorite magic weapon of the Faith of Jurgle is a scythe. Fortunately, mechanically, we don't have a scythe stat block, but I'm sure you could come up with one on your own or find one out there on the internet. 
Next is just a list of appropriate thematic items from official 5th edition sources. From the Dungeon Master's Guide, there's the Nine Life Stealer, the Oil Etherealness, Pipes of Haunting, the Mace of Terror, Plate Armor of Etherealness, Armor of Necrotic Resistance, Potion of Necrotic Resistance, Ring of Necrotic Resistance, Rod of Resurrection, Scroll of Protection from Undead, and the Wand of Fear. From the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, you could easily reflavor the Orzhov Guild Signet. Finally, from Tales from the Yawning Portal, there's the Ghost Lantern. Alright, thank you for listening to Religion in the Realms. If you're interested in keeping up with the release of future episodes, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and follow the podcast Twitter account at Realms Religion. These episodes are also uploaded to YouTube as well. The podcast YouTube channel can be found under Religion in the Realms. If you wish to get in touch with me, my personal Twitter is at Shifts Embrace, or you can send an email to realmsreligion at gmail.com, all in lowercase letters. For those interested, I have posted a link in the video description to a Discord server I have set up. For audio listeners, you can find the link to the invite pinned on the podcast Twitter page. Next episode will be on Valkyr, protector of ships and sailors. Until next time, may Tarimora look kindly upon your dice rolls, Helm protect you, and Lathander light your path. Music for this episode, Gregorian Chant, by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 4.0.